Hey everyone, and welcome to today's General Hospital reaction. Big day on General Hospital, but as always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos. And me and Cassie are putting up a bunch of new videos from Wisconsin, so make sure you check that out. In honor of Comic Con, I'm wearing my Harry Potter Snuggie. So, yay, Comic Con, which is over, but I don't care because I was traveling while it was going on, so I didn't have a chance to celebrate it on the internet. <laughs> so don't forget this week's best of the week is going to be best conflict so as you're watching the show throughout the week make sure you either vote in you know the day that it happens or vote on Friday both votes count because it's just easier that way so now for today's general hospital reaction so Jordan convincing Julian to give her the gun and let her call in the Mickey Diamond shooting was a great great I love her I love her she's amazing she's absolutely I think one hands down one of the best characters on the show right now I mean she saved her cover from being blown she still retains Julian's trust and then she gets on the phone with the boss and recognizes Luke Spencer's voice so well Luke Spencer's voice so absolutely amazing I love her it had to be said with the Luke Spencer it had to be said and now it's said it's out there so now they're gonna I don't know where Anna's gonna go with that but it's gonna go somewhere my hair is super long okay so Nina just standing there and being like come in at thinking it's Rosalie and it winds up being Nathan like what if it was Sam like I know Nathan kind of fell for this whole ooh I was practicing standing thing but I don't think like Sam would have so moral of the story don't assume who's on the other side of the door Especially if you're hiding something super huge, like, you can really walk when you're in a wheelchair. Like, oh, Nina. But, uh, on the other end of the Nina spectrum, she might be a wackadoo, but I'm glad that her and Nathan are finally spending some time together, because I feel like that's really, really long overdue. And, here's something I never thought I'd say. Thank goodness for Nina for finally getting Nathan to admit that he has feelings for Maxie. So now we have official confirmation, like the words have been said, that one half of this Maxie-Nathan duo has expressed outward feelings towards the other. And I just want to clarify something real fast. Because with Nina talking about um, how Nathan needs to, you know, win Maxie, this, that, and the other thing. And here's why I do not take issue with that. Um, Nathan doesn't need to win Maxie. She, he really already has Maxie. She has feelings for him that she just won't admit. What she needs to do is see through Levi, and as soon as she does that, she would go right to Nathan, because she already has feelings for Nathan. And that's why it's different than when Luke was pursuing, I mean, no, no, when Nicholas was pursuing Elizabeth, when Elizabeth was already involved with AJ, and then involved with Rick, although I don't know if he went, yeah, he did. So that's why I took issue with Nicholas's perseverance, and why I don't take issue with Nathan's perseverance. In one, you know, it's totally two separate situations. So I just wanted to address that before anyone brought it up. Because, like, I was thinking and I was like, oh, well, you know, why don't I have an issue with this? And then I realized why. So now I'm sharing it with you because that's what we do on this channel. So let me know. Do you kind of take the same, um, what do you call it, outlook on that than I do? I'm sorry, I haven't been asking a question. So that's the question. Do you kind of see the difference that I'm pointing out there? That's a stupid question. So fire is absolutely devastating. Fire, a house fire, is literally one of my biggest fears. And the other one is the black market organ trade, which they kind of touched on a few days ago because I'm catching up with, you know, Tracy trying to find alternative ways to get in organs. Like, you know, where do you think those alternative organs come from besides, like, paying someone for a kidney? Like, you can't pay someone to donate their heart. So, you know, it's just scary. Scary world out there. And poor Molly, literally her whole world is falling apart. Her dad just died. Now she's lost literally everything except for her life. But her outside life is crumbling. 
that her mother's not taking her side with this Julian thing, which kind of annoys me, because I know if I had an issue with someone my mom was dating, like, she would not be dating them anymore, because you're supposed to put your kids over the person you date. It's just what you're supposed to do. And losing photo albums, too. Like, I just can't. I just can't stand it. And Alexis dismissing Molly and her feelings towards Julian. Like, it's just ridiculous anymore. Like, absolutely, positively, 1,000 billion percent ridiculous. Uh, oh, <laughs> so I was really hoping Lulu would talk Maxie out of the marriage. But it started to go that way, and then it stopped going that way. Sad face. <laughs> and Don, uh, so... <laughs> Sorry, I just, I literally wrote Nathan and Maxie forever, because I'm secretly 16, I guess. So Dante says the best partner he ever had was Nathan, which, I mean, is not the highest standard in the world when you consider one of his previous partners was his former best friend who then took his wife hostage and almost killed her. So, I mean, not the biggest part. And were him and Padilla ever, like, partner partners? I cannot remember. And, you know... Maxie's talking about how, you know, down and out she was when she met Levi and how, you know, she couldn't even get herself to move and this and that and the other thing. And, like, she's literally making everyone's point that they're saying. You know, she was in a super vulnerable place when she met Levi and he kind of took advantage of that and now we're here. Like, that's everyone's point. You're literally making everybody's point. Maxie. She, oh, I can't wait till she gets a clue. I really can't. So team save Alice, and now it looks like the heart might go come from Mickey Diamond, because now Mickey Diamond is brain dead, so hopefully Mickey Diamond never sampled the drugs that they be selling. And Tracy is so, so selfish. I mean, Alice is dying, and she's worried about the secret that her and Luke are keeping, that they're trying to take the family business. Oh, Alice can't know she's dying, because if she knows she's dying, then she'll tell my secret. Like, seriously? You're so self-absorbed. I want to push you. Just over there. Just push. Tracy. And can Ned stay around forever? Like, seriously. Ned needs to just stay on my TV screen forever. I don't even care if he doesn't fit in with the scene. Just to have him in the corner up there, okay? And welcome, David Otunga. Is that how you pronounce it? I think you do. Um, he was so nice and amazing to Alice and saying how, you know, all the wrestlers took a page from her book. And it was really, really awesome. Now, I don't watch wrestling, so, like, I don't know, know who he is, but he seems like a really nice guy. So thank you for gracing my screen today, David Otunga. Well, that'll do it for today's General Hospital reaction. Again, I'm so glad to be back, and I'm not totally caught up with I have, like, two more episodes left, so I hope I'm doing a good job trying to, like, you know, stay with this. <laughs> uh, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos, and I should have more Wisconsin videos coming up. I, like, haven't been able to touch my electronics because I'm just still, you know, uh, two days ago I woke up in Wisconsin, and so I'm just still getting used to being grounded like right here <laughs> and I will see you tomorrow for more general hospital I hope you have a great day I hope you like our new angle with my scary uh, six foot nutcracker back there and uh, I already said I hope you have a great day I'm not good at outros and I will see you tomorrow